and welcome back to series two, episode 23 of the House Renovation. That was a very fast and energetic intro from Holiday. I was not quite expecting that. But, spoiler, if you were expecting to tune in on today's video and see the grand finale, finale? The grand... Reveal or finale? <laughs> reveal, the grand reveal, the grand finale, the reveal of the kitchen, you are gonna be thoroughly disappointed because, um, spoiler, it's not done. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but we are super, super, super grateful of you sticking with us through these unprecedented times and you watching these videos really does mean a lot to us. But we have managed to get into the kitchen and actually do a few more finishing touches to kind of help finish the kitchen off. But more importantly, there are things to attend to outside. So, it is currently, oh gosh, mid-October, and we have got a really, really nice warm day, which is kind of strange, hence me uh, wearing my shorts and t-shirt in the middle of October, and we thought we would take advantage of this nice weather that we are having and pick the apples and the pears off of both of our trees and start making some cider. a proper apple press which is going to make this or making the cider a hell of a lot easier now this thing is basically just a giant apple press it just presses the apples to get all of the juice out and some of you might have actually seen this a year ago on our instagram now we tend to put like lots of other stuff on our instagrams which we don't put in these videos so if you want to see other random things what me and holly get up to make sure you follow the instagrams so we've just chopped up some apples and some pears to make our first batch of cider. It's gonna be a mixed batch. However, as you can hear, because it's a nice day, everyone is also out in their gardens and the neighbors have just started mowing the lawn. So we're probably not gonna have much more audio. <laughs> So, after many, many hours of pressing apples and pears. Look at this. We've got about 13 liters, which is about three gallons of juice in here. This is our pear and our apple juice basically combined into this one bucket. Now making cider takes quite a long time, can potentially take months, if not a year before it's actually drinkable because there's a few different processes we've got to do along the way. Now, luckily for you, you don't have to wait a whole year to see what this cider tastes like. Well, we have to wait a whole year before we know what that cider tastes like. But with a bit of movie magic, as you can see, See in front of us right here we have got last year's pear cider this cider was actually pressed one year one day ago we've already opened it hence it's in the glass nearly gone Holly. <laughs> so it might be a bit weird that you're watching us drink our last year's cider but hey but anyway as much fun as i have had today i hate to say that we have better crack on with that i was waiting for holly to say that's enough playing in the garden it's usually the other way around usually i'm like can i just play playstation for five more minutes <laughs> <laughs> So yes, back to actually doing some actual housework and some actual DIY work in the kitchen. But why don't you let us know in the comment section down below right now, if you like me and Holly doing some other things 
besides doing the actual DIY work on the actual house? Do you want to see me and Holly do a few other like random things like we just did then, making some cider? But yes, back to actually doing some DIY work. One thing that I have done since the last video is put this end panel on to the end of the row of these top cabinets. Now I didn't film it, but this did take me a very, very long time. As you can probably see here, there is a lot of like intricate kind of woodworky skills and jigsaw skills to get the uh, the piece of wood to go in and out of all of this kind of uneven brickwork, which goes all the way up through here. Now there obviously is still a little bit of a gap. I couldn't get it much better than how it is at the moment, but I will be putting a bead of silicon all the way down to basically fill that gap in. So from a distance, it will basically look like that piece of wood is going straight into the actual fireplace. But before I do that, I'm going to do one other kind of custom bit of work with this piece of, uh, or this area of the kitchen. And that is, I'm going to build another custom shelf similar to these ones, while I'm going to be using the same wood as I built these shelves out of here. And I'm going to put another thin shelf basically coming along this end panel now, going into the side of this fireplace. So it's going to match up with the same height as this shelf and come out along here. Now it does look quite small, but actually it's the same width of an actual bottle. So if I get a bottle, for instance, these coffee syrups, these bottles are basically the exact width of what that shelf is going to be. And it's going to be super simple to actually put a thin shelf along here. And I'm going to build it the same way as these ones. So as you can see here, I've got two kind of just straight brackets, which I'm going to put on here, two straight brackets. Then I'm going to get one little 90 degree degree bracket put on the wall here so when that shelf goes on it's going to be all nice and supported and super simple to actually build but I think it's going to look super cool and again it's just going to make the whole kitchen feel really custom and purpose built. How cool does this little shelf look right here? I personally really like it and I feel like it just adds that kind of customizability. I think that's the word. It adds the kind of the custom look to the actual kitchen. Yes, the kitchen cabinets and stuff are from Ikea, but adding in things like this little shelf here and these shelves up here just makes it feel like it's a little bit more designed, a little bit more kind of unique and it gives mine and Holly's sort of a uh, personal touch to the actual kitchen by putting in these kind of shelves and stuff. So we think it looks super cool and it's gonna be super useful having a little bit of a shelf here. Things like the coffee syrups, like I said, will fit on there and make things reachable because this is where our coffee station is gonna go. So our kettle and our coffee machine and teapot and stuff all lives here. So having all this kind of easy access stuff makes it kind of nice and user friendly. And speaking of this little bit down here, you might have noticed this new piece of wood on here. Now this is called a chamfer. I believe this is what it's called. And it's almost like the finishing touch to the actual bottom of the cabinet. And when we get around to putting lights underneath or our LEDs, they will basically be hidden by this little piece of wood, which sticks out on the bottom of the cupboard. So what I'm gonna have to do now is <laughs> basically put the chamfer all the way along the bottom of these cupboards under here. So again, when we get to put the lights under, the LEDs under, it will basically hide those and give a really nice under cabinet glow throughout the whole kitchen. <laughs> Installing things like these chamfers onto the bottom of these cupboards may seem like it's a very quick and easy job because it takes up about 10 seconds of this whole video, but trust me, doing things like this really does take a lot of time and a lot of patience because there's a lot of angles you gotta work out and making sure all of the joints meet up so everything looks all good. But as you can see now, these chamfers go all the way under the bottom of all of these cabinets and also underneath this one as well. So 
So yes, I really do feel like putting these end panels on, building this shelf in the other shelves we built in a previous video, and putting these chamfers on really does help tie the whole kitchen back together and make everything look uh, consistent and, and kind of professional. I'm kind of pleased with what we've managed to do within this kitchen. But there is one more thing I've got to do, which I did say earlier, and that is put the silicon down that gap there to basically fill in that gap. But before I can do that, we, um, we still got the protective film on all of the doors and we were keeping it on until the kitchen was going to be completely done in case it gets knocked or anything when we put the worktops in or when the carpenter comes around to actually install the worktops but what we're going to do now is basically or I'm going to let Holly rip off all of the protective films on the top of these cabinets So like James said in the beginning of this video, it is mid-October and that means it's been six months since we planted our pumpkins. So the main thing we're growing is pumpkins. So we've grown these from seed and we've got blue ones and orange ones. And that means it's time to harvest our pumpkins. I'm not going to lie, Holly. What? It kind of, kind of looks like from here that you've completely neglected the veg patch. That's because I have. <laughs> Apparently that's what makes them grow better, right? Exactly, yeah. Pumpkins are messy. <laughs> can't wait to get our kitchen sorted is so we can turn these into a nice pumpkin curry. So how good does that gap look right there? Well, there's no gap there anymore because that single bit of silicon is really finished off that piece of wood going into that brickwork. It just makes it feel like it's one unit now and doing things like taking off that plastic film, adding things on like the shelves, adding things on like these chamfers has really made this kitchen finally feel like it's really coming together now. And yes, we have been waiting for two months now, over two months for our worktops to be fitted. Hopefully the carpenter comes out soon so we can actually and finally have a finished usable kitchen.